drives it into right center field, hit a ton. This baby is way back. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball Channel. And today, I'm going to talk a little San Diego Padres. They've made a little move. And I want to give a shout out to Mostly Sports for requesting a Padres video. Also going to have a full Padres 2020 preview coming up very, very soon. Check that out. The San Diego Padres have made a pretty interesting signing here by bringing Brian Dozier on board. Kind of surprisingly, a minor league contract. You'd think that Brian Dozier... You hear that name, I think of the Minnesota Twins. I think of a hit, hitting 40-something bombs for them. I think, dang, Brian Dozier, he's, you fall quick in the big leagues. If you have a season or two where you play don't play too well these days, you're signing a minor league deal. Now, he might have had some major league offers, but he took the minor league deal with the Padres because he wants to win that starting job at second base. I think he's got a shot to do it. But Brian Dozier, this is a pretty big name, a guy who played with the Dodgers. Obviously, he was with the Nationals last year. But when you look at his stats the last couple years, you can see what's going on. He has struggled. He has not played up to the level that he was playing from about 2015 to 2017. This guy was an all-star in 15. He won a gold glove in 17. He got MVP votes all those years. With the Twins in 2016, he crushed 42 bombs. He had a 340 on base. But unfortunately, he started to struggle in 18 and in 19. He's 32 years old. And last year with the Nats, he did hit 20 bombs, but could only manage a 238 batting average. Still got a 340 on base. So his on base percentage is still pretty decent. 61 walks. He knows how to work the walk. But you know, you got a guy like this. If he can get back in shape, you know, he's not like he's old, old. He's 32 years old. If he can get in shape, if he did get in shape, it's a little late to say if he can. If he did over the offseason, off if he worked hard, if he comes into camp ready to prove that he could still play close to the level that he played at a few years back, he's got a chance to be the starter at second base. The Padres do have a ton of candidates, though. Obviously, Jerickson Profar, who also didn't have the greatest year last year with the A's, he's trying to play second base. And then you got a ton of other guys in line for that job. Ty Francis, someone I got to mention, I just assumed he was going to be in the lineup some way, somehow after last season in AAA, who, I mean, this dude was freaking Babe Ruth slash Ty Cobb slash Ted Williams in AAA last year. What the hell was that? The guy was hitting well over 400 for the majority of the year, ended up with a 399 batting average in 296 at-bats, 27 bombs. Unfortunately, that batting average was only 234 at the big league level, seven home runs and 184 at-bats. He's only 25, though. I think they still got to believe in Ty France, or at least they're not going to give up on him just yet. I know I wouldn't with that performance. I know it was the Pacific Coast League, but, you know, Pacific Coast League does not explain a 400 batting average. The guy absolutely tore up 25 home runs in limited at-bats. He didn't even get a full season. So, I mean, you got to not give up on him. Now, he does play first base as well, but you got Hosmer there at first. So he's been playing a little bit of second base, and he's definitely a candidate there as well. So you got Jerickson Profar, you got Ty France, and now obviously Brian Dozier in the mix, and then a, a ton of other guys who are probably going to play backup or platoon-type roles or be a little more versatile. Talking about guys like Ivan Castillo, Owen Miller, um, Greg Garcia, Esteban Quiros, who also played last year in AAA, hit 271 in 306 at-bats, 19 home runs, but unfortunately when you played next to Ty France, didn't look quite as impressive, but still... He's someone to look at. So the Padres got a big competition for second base, but I thought this was a really cool signing. And if he makes the team, yeah, they're going to have to pay him a little more, but they'll be happy to do so if he does win that job or if at least he makes the team. And he can also be a valuable pinch hitter off the bench with that kind of power. According to Jace Tingler, the manager of the Padres, he said that is our most open competition. Season happens, injuries happen. The more quality depth that we can build, it just gives us more options for later down the line. Now, this is a guy who hit 42 home runs not too long ago. Is he going to repeat that performance in 2020 if he makes the team? Probably not because he's been declining. He's 32. Like I said, 32, not old. He should still be all right. But when you're already declining, you typically don't turn it around all of a sudden, get close to your mid-30s and become like you were at 27. Doesn't usually happen unless, you know, unless you want to take some performance enhancing stuff. But, you know, 
He's not going to do that because he doesn't want to get suspended. So this is a pretty good signing, though. Minor league deal, you get someone like that on a minor league deal, you got to feel good about it. It's late in the offseason, not late in the offseason. Spring training is here. Spring training is here. I didn't realize he hadn't signed yet. I probably assumed he signed somewhere, but never heard about it. So Brian Dozier signs with the Padres. And again, I'll be talking more in depth about the Padres very soon. Check out a video next week. Let me know, though, what do you think about this signing? Who do you think, if you're a Padres fan, who should play second base? Who is your favorite candidate? to play second base next year. Do you think Ty France deserves a full season to see what he can do? The guy hit 400 in AAA in a pretty big sample size. Should he get a big sample size in the big leagues? Obviously, it depends also how these guys do in spring training. I get that, but it's going to be an interesting competition for that second base job in Padres camp. And we'll talk more in depth about this team. This is an interesting team right here. They're kind of in the middle there in the NL West. You know, you got the Giants and Diamondbacks. I mean, excuse me, Giants and Rockies. No one's too high on. And then you got the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers that are looking pretty good. But what about the Padres? They're kind of in the middle there. So it's going to be interesting. Can they surprise some people? Can they make a push for a wild card spot? Or are they going to be disappointing, disappointed again like last year and end up towards the bottom of the division? We'll find out. It's going to be interesting. And I'll have my predictions soon. Guys, thank you so much again for joining me on today's video. We're talking a little bit of Padre. Shout out again to Mostly Sports. Appreciate your comments. Appreciate your support of the channel. We'll be talking Padres more in depth. And I'll try to see if I can get a Padres bobblehead to give away for that video as well. So keep an eye out for that. Y'all have a fantastic day. Check the links out in the description below. Go visit my Twitter account. Give me some follows there. Trying to get to 100 followers on Twitter. Have a great day. Going to talk to you guys very soon. See ya! When the Giants come to town.